So here we are and um, part two of this OCXO project. It's been sitting here for two days roughly and that's long enough I think. Um, any longer than that I'm just going to get bored with the bloody thing. So it, let's just see what it's doing now on the counter. So it's gone up by 42, 43 millihertz roughly which is <coughs> 0.042 hertz um, which I would probably think that's worse than I would have expected from an OCXO of this quality but I'm pretty sure it's down to the uh, the, the uh, potentiometer it's not a precision device it's not designed to be used in this sort of application and it's going to drift in value I mean, I noticed when I was measuring the voltage on the wiper, it was dithering around by a few milli volts. So I think the, the oscillator itself is going to be fine inside the counter. So I think the next thing to do is to pull the counter apart, get the board out, take the uh, old OCX off the board and just wire this one in temporarily on the bench. Check the power supply can handle it. The uh, startup current, which is over an amp, and then if that works, um, just check the calibration works. See if it'll calibrate okay. And if that goes okay, then I'll make a board up and fit it into the uh, counter. So I'll get on with that next. So I've got the uh, uh, OCXO board out of the uh, counter and remove the uh, old. Um, OCXO which is made by Isotemp and I've got it lashed up on the bench with the new one and it's not it's certainly not the ideal way to uh, test something but uh, it's only a rough test I mean everything's just flapping around in the breezes Dave would say the EEV blog and um, I'm also monitoring the, uh, the 12 volt supply on my meter and I'll turn it on in a minute. Everything's cold at the moment. The OCXO is cold. So I'll just plug it in. Okay, um, it's plugged in and it's uh, in standby mode, the counter. And it's dropping the uh, 12 volt rail down to 11.43. And I think, well, it doesn't help having a, a thin wire on the 12 volt, which I'm monitoring there. Anyway, I turn the counter on and see what the frequency readout says. And I'm in, inputting 10 megahertz from my GPS DR. And yeah, it's, well, it's 33 hertz off at the moment with the uh, oven cold. So I just wait for it to... Um, warm up and then we'll do the calibration make sure it calibrates okay I don't think there would be a problem on the power supply once the oven's warmed up it's only going to draw 300 milliamps I think it was roughly so I'll come back in a few minutes once this is warmed up okay it's been on about 15-20 minutes and I think that's long enough and it's about a hertz off so I'll just see if I can do the calibration okay okay and I'll select time base and enter Right, enter, calibrating, fine. It takes a while to do this. And what are we reading now? 11.78 11 volts on the 12 volt rail. I suppose that's reasonably good, considering the volts drop on that thin wire. This takes a few minutes, I think, to do this. I'll just pause it, I think. Okay, it says TB, Cal passed. Just press run. 
Okay, well that's pretty good, isn't it? That's down to do um, uh, better resolution. So that's uh, within three three millihertz. Yeah, that's within three millihertz, and it looks fairly stable considering the the way it's all wired up. And wonder what we've got on the. Uh, I've just got the meter now connected to the uh, trim connection, which comes off the DAC. That's reading 2.448, which before it was, uh, I think, 1.7. So, anyway, that seems successful. So I can go ahead and make a circuit board for it and install it permanently in the uh, counter. Okay, um, I made a PCB and stuck it, this oven on it. Certainly not the prettiest PCB in the world, but I guess it'll do. Oh, I've forgotten to solder the earth. Never mind, I'll do that in a minute. And soldered some spacers onto the uh, board. And that will then mount like that off at the main circuit board. <coughs> so I just go ahead and wire it all up and then install it in the uh, the counter. So it's all back together and working and as you can see it fits in fairly well. It's um, a lot bigger than the old one which is here but no problems getting it in there. There's plenty of space in the box. So I'm just going to let it warm up now and do a, a final calibration on it and then it's I'll test it over a few days. So here we are, roughly two days after I last did the uh, uh, time-based calibration on the uh, new OCXO. And when I did the calibration, it was uh, reading approximately one millihertz high. Um, you never get perfect accuracy after a calibration. Um, in theory, it should be all zeros. But I think that's down to the uh, DAC they're using. It's a 12-bit DAC. And um, two to the power of twelve is four oh nine six. So that gives you four four oh nine six steps. If you divide the five volts reference by four oh nine six, you get one point three millivolt. So that's the actual steps that it's able to calibrate in one point three millivolt steps. So maybe they should have included a better. Um, had a duck in it, I don't know, but I think it's good enough for what it is. So, anyway, after 48 hours roughly, it's um, it's drifted by approximately 21 millihertz, which I think is reasonable. It's certainly um, a lot better than when I had it the OCXO wide up on the bench. I think it's uh, I think it drifted about 40 uh, millihertz then, and that was down to that pot, obviously. So, um, oh, by the way, I've got it on a 10 second gate at the moment, which I just discovered, and you get even more resolution. You get down to the last digit. Um, that represents 10 microhertz, which is completely pointless in this application, but it just gives you an example of what this counter is capable of doing. So I think all in all, it's been a worthwhile improvement to change the OCXO to a better quality one. So, in conclusion, um, does anybody want to buy a used OCXO by Isotemp? Anyway, I'll probably stick it on uh, eBay. Um, if it does sell, um, it'll offset the cost of buying the new OCXO. So, that's all for now. I hope somebody got something out of this. Uh, bye for now.